beware. Today it's all about one hot new 8-core CPU that brings some brutal performance to the table. Yes, by that I don't just mean raw multi-core performance, but also very, very good gaming performance. And today I'll also be talking about what I've hinted at in my previous two reviews of the Ryzen 5900X and 5950X, and that is that if you're just gaming, you certainly can skip on buying one of those more expensive Ryzen 9 processors. Well, that is if you don't happen to need more raw performance to work with besides gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, featuring 8 cores and 16 threads based on the new Zen 3 architecture. Now when I take a look at pricing in this very moment, we are looking at roughly 450 US dollars for the 5800X. So that's pretty much the MSRP we are dealing with, if I'm not entirely mistaken here. According to AMD, the MSRP is at $449. What a nice surprise for once. Not too much of a surprise on the other hand is the fact that AMD seems to thrive on their current dominating position in the CPU market as the leading CPU manufacturer, at least in terms of multithreading, and similar as to what Intel has been doing year for year, they slowly start increasing prices here and there. While a 3800X in theory came in at an MSRP of about $399, today's 5800X will cost you a whole $50 more, $449 at the end of the day, according to AMD's MSRP. Well, compared to the offered performance, we might still be talking of a good value, but it should be clear as day to us of what great importance healthy strong competition is for us consumers. After all, we may or may not end up with even higher pricing on future Ryzen generations. But oh well, that's not the point of today's video at all. As in my previous videos, today's 5800X will not only go against its direct predecessor, 3800X, but also against AMD's more expensive, more powerful 5900X and 5950X Ryzen 9 CPUs. Needless to say, we'll also take a look at how well such a 5800X does against Intel's current 10th gen CPUs. Right off the bat, the 10-core i9-10900K has some serious competition and could be threatened by an 8-core CPU, depending on how you decide to look at it. Well, let's dive into all that fun, shall we? Just as I've done in my previous videos, I'd like to take my time to thank the quick and effective Spartan warrior that goes by the name of Yargios from the hardware shop Equipper. He managed to get a hold on all that good wares very early on for me, meaning I could spend a whole month switching over to a new test system, which was a huge step. So all I did was benchmark, 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 day in, day out. But all that work was totally worth it, in my opinion, and I'm happy with the result. So once again, thanks goes out to Yargios, hashtag not sponsored. I guess no one of you seriously expected the 5800X to come with any real accessories. All that's included is the bare CPU along with the usual documentation. Now what about the core layout? As I already went over in my last Ryzen 5000 reviews, AMD with Zen 3 has now fully parted ways with their 4-core CCX layouts for now. Previously with Zen 2, an 8-core CPU would consist of two 4-core groups. This was then called a CCX core complex. Both of these CCX units had their very own 16 megabyte level 3 cache they could access. But for the communication between those cores to happen, a trip to the I.O. die was a requirement. With Zen 3, such CCDs slash CPU dies have been enlarged, which in turn means there's less communication required, if we put it very simply. In the case of the 5800X, we therefore only get a single CCD, a single 8-core die that isn't split. The whole die therefore has full access to the whole 32 megabytes of L3 cache. The bottom line is, this massively reduces latencies and that greatly affects performance in a positive way, especially in games. So besides architectural improvements, that enhanced core layout is one reason for those huge performance gains over the last generation. Now before we get into the clock speeds, let me introduce you my test system real quick. In the core of it, the mighty fine ASRock X570PG Velocita or Velocita motherboard, which happens to be my current favorite among X570 boards. From a technical standpoint, it's at the very top there, while pricing is very humane and attractive so to speak for what's being offered. 
the CPU is being cooled by my usual Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler, and as for the graphics card, I've gone with the quite expensive but perfectly suited one for testing purposes, the Nvidia RTX 3090 in the ASUS Tough Gaming Edition. Now when I stress all 8 cores of the 5800X, I'm at first landing at 4567MHz. The CPU is able to successfully maintain that one for quite some time until I drag the test out longer. The clock speed then minimally drops down to 4542MHz. Not bad, not bad at all. In terms of boost clock, AMD states a maximum of 4.7 GHz. Luckily enough, I'm easily hitting 4841 MHz. Also just to let you know, no aiding features such as PBO Precision Boost Overdrive come into play here. I've left it disabled in order not to introduce any additional variables. We don't want that when testing. In a game shot of the Tomb Raider, on average I'm achieving a max of 3220 to all the way up to 4840 MHz. It's fluctuating quite a bit depending on the current load. Alright, enough beating around the bush, now we just have to finally inspect those test results. Enjoy! As I've said in my previous reviews of those Ryzen 9 CPUs by AMD's new 5000 series, nothing less than great praise is deserved here for these huge, very noticeable performance gains. What AMD has done with Zen 3 is nothing short of amazing, and not only makes their very own 3000 predecessor series look old, but those new CPUs also put a lot of pressure on Intel's current 10th gen offerings. In productivity aspects, such as rendering etc, the Ryzen 7 5800X 8-core is able to pick a fight with the Intel i9-10900K, which comes with 10 cores. It's either the 5800X being close behind that 10900K, or in a few instances, the AMD CPU even takes the lead. Although to be fair, it needs to be said, it comes down to use case at the end of the day. Not each and every program does paint the same picture. A 
aside from that, the 5800X and 10900K normally aren't meant to be compared against each other. The current pricing on the other hand more or less forces us to do so. Anyway, this also means there's a pretty noteworthy gap between new and old model. The 5800X is just so much faster than the 3800X. And that doesn't only apply to multi-threaded performance. No, much more impressive for the gamers among you will be the fact that there's a huge FPS gain to be witnessed. A 5800X catapults itself to the very top and doesn't drop behind those more expensive 5900X and 5950X CPUs by much, if even, when taking a couple of game titles into consideration. The average achieved frame rate in games I've tested tells a lot. So I don't want to beat around the bush for too long and get straight to the point. The 5800X is an outstanding gaming CPU, which also does remarkably well under heavy workloads. Incredible what this speedy 8-core is capable of. The power consumption is also looking good, there's nothing to complain there either. Albeit, the most power efficient out of the bunch the lineup seems to be the 5950X, the flagship model. Rather unexpected to some might be the temperatures. You sure would expect a 12 or 16 core to run hotter than an 8 core, but it's very obvious this particular 8 core CPU certainly does its thing at a noticeably higher temperature. So if you're planning to get yourself such a 5800X, make sure to get a capable cooling solution for it. This particular 8 core's temperatures are a bit harder to keep at bay than those other two models in the upper performance tier. But aside from that, incredible what AMD is currently offering in the CPU department. Now pricing and value, that's where opinions seem to differ. Everyone has their own. While we for now can greatly praise AMD, it's worth noting we could very well be in the middle of some sort of calm before the storm situation. According to the latest rumors, we should be expecting something huge by the blue giant Intel. At first the lineup should max out at only 8 cores, no more 10 cores, but we should be getting some phenomenal IPC performance uplifts. Intel's roadmap, however, is a bit of a mess to put it this way. What I've heard is that there's also a 16 core in the making, which could see the light of day this year even. Now whether or not that turns out to be true, I have absolutely no idea. My point is, the competition apparently, luckily for us consumers, doesn't seem to be sleeping. That's a good thing for us consumers. Nonetheless, I can definitely recommend the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, not only for gaming, but for productivity workloads too. As always, thank you so much for sticking around for so long. You'll hopefully hear more from me soon in my next video. Until then, take care.